Hey guys, welcome to the fifth video in the C-Sharp linked list tutorial. In this video, we are going to implement the remove and clear methods and then test them. The first thing you'll notice is that there are many comments and summaries that I added. This is just to make it easier to read and understand what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is minimize all of these right here just so they're out of our way. This is a cool feature in Microsoft Visual Studio. You can just minimize a block of code. It's still there, but it's just out of the way so we don't have to worry about it. Alright, now we're going to add the remove method. So public, and what this is going to return is the object that you removed at that specified index. So it's going to return an object, it's going to be called remove, and it's going to take an int index. And this index is the index of the item to remove in your list. So like the add method, the first thing we're going to want to do is check to make sure that index is not negative and if it is we'll throw an error. So if index is less than zero we're going to want to throw a new argument out of range exception. I'll just do that and same thing over here index there we go and I'll just put the index right there. Great now what we want to do we'll say the list is empty what are we going to do? Oh well we can check that if this dot empty. What do we want to do? We're just going to return null because there's nothing to get from the list. Now as per the add method as well, if index is greater than the size of the list, or we're just going to set the index to the last value in the list. So if index is greater than count, I'll put this dot count just to make sure then what we're going to do is set index equal to count. Actually we're going to do index equal to count minus one and I'll show you why later. Then we're going to get the current node. So basically we're going to start with the first node. Node current, just like in the add method, equals this dot head. And this just gets the first node in the list, which is head, reference to the first node in the list. Also we want to set a new object and this will be the result. And we're going to set that equal to null is going to be the object that the remove method returns. I'll just put a return result at the bottom so we can get rid of this error up there. There we go. This also has two cases just like the add method. I'm going to give myself a little space down here. The first case is if the index equals zero. So if we're removing the first node, it's going to be different than if we're removing any other node in the list. So let's start off with the if index equals zero. I'll just put an else down here to know we have to fill that out as well. So what we want to do here, we just get the data that's in the first node because that is the one we want. So result is going to equal current dot data. Remember we gave that property so we could access the data? That's exactly why we use that. And then what we want to do is set the head to the next one. This dot head equals current dot next. And that is how we set the next one say if we have a, b, and we want to remove the first one, what we're going to do is get the data of the head node, and then set the head node equal to current, which is a, dot next, so which would be b, and what it would basically do is remove any reference to a, and just leave b. If there were other things tagged on here, say c and d, they would still stay there because they were from b. And that's everything for the first case. This one, just like the add method, is going to take a for loop to get to the index right before the one we want to take. So we're going to take a for loop, int i equals 0, and i is less than index, minus 1, because we want to get to the one right before, and then we're going to do i plus plus. And what we're going to do is the same thing here, current equals current.next, and that will just loop through the nodes and set the current to the next one. Once we get to the one right before, we want to set the data for the next one, which is going to be the one we want to remove. So result equals current.next, which will get the one we want, dot data. And that will get, let's see, right here. If we have that, I, I better copy this so I can do this later. A, B, C, D. Say we want to remove C, but we also need to get the result of C's data. So what it's going to do is loop until b, because our for loop is index minus 1, and right here it's going to set the result to current, which is b, dot next, 
which is C, dot data, which is C's data. But current is still B. The next thing we have to do is set current dot next. So basically what will B point to equal to current dot next dot next. Basically it skips over C. So current dot next will be D because it goes two away and then the reference to C will be gone. And that's how it gets rid of it. There's no actual deleting, it just removes references to the nodes. And then what do we have to do? We have to decrement the size. Actually, it's not size anymore. I changed that. It's count. So, our remove method is complete. Now I'm going to show you how to write the clear method. And like I said earlier, this is the easiest method to implement. It's one line of code for the clear method, actually. And this is just going to be a public void method. So public void clear. The one line of code, what would we have to do to get rid of this? If we had a list of A, B, C. We basically want to get rid of the reference to A because that references all the rest of them. So what would we do? We would just set the head node to null and it would remove the reference to A. So this dot head equals null. And that is how we write the clear method. Now we're going to test this out in our program method. So remember before we had this list that adds test1, test2, test3 to the list. And I'll just go right here and we will see that in fact we have a list with three items in it. The head first one is test1, test3, and test2. Now say we want to remove the second item in the list, which would be index 1. All we need to do is list.remove and we pass it an index, we'll go 1, and that will remove test 3 from the list. So if we debug again, we will see that before we execute this remove method, we still have the count of 3 with everything in it, and now I'm going to execute that line of code. Now if we go back into list, oh, count is 2. We have the head node, which is test 1, and we have the next one, which is test 2, and the next is null. So it successfully removed our test 3 item. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is testing the list.clear method. This should make the list empty. So what we're going to do, start right here. Beforehand, it has two items in it. You already know what those are. I'm going to execute that line of code, and now the list Oops! <laughs> I forgot one line of code. It's actually two lines of code. I forgot to set this dot count equal to zero because that shows that the list is empty. Sorry about that, guys. Now this will work. List dot clear, and now the list has zero items in it, and it is in fact empty. So that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel, and I will see you in the next tutorial.